How's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining me again for what will surely be a lovely evening talking about the world's worst music in town. Sorry, it's been a while since my last update. I've had uh, a couple of getaways out of town. Uh, it's been nice to get out of town and get some fresh air, but uh, you know, I gotta get back to it. <clears throat> I gotta tell you guys about every single CD I own, or uh, I'm gonna go fucking crazy, apparently. Uh, since we last spoke, my collection has been greatened by this one. This is Nazheim's Solens Vemod. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing Swedish black metal record. Not your typical Swedish kind of fare. Um, it is pretty melodic, but it's a little more like atmospheric, a little more post-black metal, I guess. Um, Northern Silence put this out a couple of years ago, and I've been meaning to check it out. Ah, oh, it's so fucking good. Uh, this is what I've gotten since we allow, uh, spoke last, and then I've also gotten, of course, Blood Incantation Star Spot. We'll talk about that here in a minute because it actually falls in alphabetically. Uh, we're listening to Nijikada's Irg Alms album. This came out on mine and my buddy's label, Pagan Flames, a couple of years ago. Proud to put this out. This is one of my favorite post-black metal records. And then... You know, I see a lot of people talking about unboxings and getting off on unboxings and stuff, and I don't really get it. I don't see what the big deal is. It's in a box, and now it isn't. Duh, not a big deal. But uh, we're going to do an unboxing anyways. A buddy of mine sent me this. The reason I'm doing it, though, is because I have no fucking idea what is in this thing. I've had a lot of guesses. I think I have a pretty educated guess, but I'm not going to go for it. But you're going to be with me as I open it and see what it is. Uh, so, yeah, let's get to it. First thing we'll go through the CDs here. Um, I'm going to start with a band I have quite a few from. This is Blind Guardian. Amazing, amazing band. If you're into power metal, I can see why you wouldn't be. But uh, you know, this is this is pretty much the best. I'm only into a couple of power metal bands, and Blind Guardian for me is where it's at. Um, we have Follow the Blind from 1989. This is their second record. I actually don't have Battalions of Fear, um, I just, I guess I've never seen it for sale, never picked it up, I don't know, but this is a, a really early album of theirs, um, they didn't really, as far as I'm concerned, pick up their more complex, more symphonic, more ornate style until this third record, this is uh, Tales from the Twilight World, alright, yeah, it's been a while since I was into this band and listened to all these earlier records, um, so I'm kind of having a hard time remembering like the differences between this one, this is uh, somewhere far beyond, and I know I'm, miss I'm missing the, like, the best one, Imagination's from the other side. Um, this is the Forgotten Tales, this is a bunch of like live stuff, B-sides, uh, all that kind of stuff, just like an EP. <clears throat> uh, this is the first album that I ever heard from them. This is Nightfall on Middle Earth, uh, this is all based on Tolkien. <laughs> stuff. This is just a Century Media version. Uh, lots of killer, killer uh, mem memorable choruses and stuff. Uh, super melodic, just complex, brilliant, brilliant album. Um, I would say, I don't know, I guess I have a hard time picking what my favorite record is from them. I kind of like Imaginations and Tales from the Twilight, or Nightfall Middle Earth, and this one equally for different reasons, but this is the one I listen to most often, and I think this is the one people seem to think this is where they took a shit. And this is uh, A Night at the Opera. <laughs> I might be getting sick again, I'm fucking not happy about that, so I'm sorry. Uh, so this is uh, A Night at the Opera, and I don't know, I guess it is a little less metal, it's a little more vocal, in fact, A Night at the Opera is kind of a tribute to Queen, in a way. Uh, but talk about catchy fucking choruses, amazing, amazing, just memorable, catchy songs, stuff that you just want to leap out of your seat and sing along with, and that's what I love about this record so much. Uh, for me, that's the last album that I liked uh, from them, and this is a twist in the myth. I just picked this up uh, not too long ago for a couple of bucks. This is their 2006 album. I should probably give it a fair shake. Uh, because it seems like people are appreciating them uh, just like they used to uh, for their earlier stuff. Oh, I almost forgot too. Check out this fucking shirt. This is a 
This is Dizma. I love this fucking design. It's got a bunch of skeletons puking into a coffin. And it glows in the dark. You can't go wrong with that. Dizma fucking rules. Okay, next we've got uh, Blood Axis. This is their bloat sacrifice in Sweden. And this is on um, Cold Meat Industry. And then this is their album, uh, The Gospel of Inhumanity. These two are so good if you like this kind of thing. It's kind of like uh, martial folk, uh, neo folk kind of stuff. Um, just really interesting, kind of sparse stuff. I really love the design of this digipack. It's like a slide out digipack, and then you've got this little envelope, and then you've got like the, the Celtic shield there, and then behind there is the disc. And then when you slide that in, that's Michael Moynihan, by the way. And then you slide in there, and then you got the booklet here. I've never seen a digipack with such brilliant fucking setup and layout. It doesn't open up or anything. Well, it's not supposed to, it's kind of coming apart here. But I've always loved this digipack. I don't listen to this one as much as I do the Gospel of Inhumanity. And honestly, I do put this on every time, every now and then, a couple times a year or so. Uh, it's got some really catchy stuff, just some real atmospheric uh, sort of things. Um, I guess as far as, if, you, if when I say neo-folk you're expecting like acoustic stuff like Death in June, I wouldn't say it's uh, all that similar to that, but it's just really the nearest or closest comparison that I could make to it. But it's really cool kind of studying music or something, if you will. Uh, next, I've got, I don't know, this is a band called Blood Cow, and I think they're from Omaha. And I don't even know where I got this, but anyway, I played a show with these guys many years ago, 16 years ago or so, um, and I think I probably bought their CD. By the way, that reminds me, I totally spaced it off. So. Uh, my old band uh, just released two songs in a video, and if you're subscribed, you probably saw it pop up a couple of days ago, not really knowing what it was. Uh, but so what happened was we recorded, we wrote and recorded uh, four songs. I don't know if we were working on like an album or an EP or something, but we got as far as like four, maybe five songs or so uh, into a record, and we decided to go ahead and record. Uh, because I think some things were coming up in my life. I was gonna move or something and we were just like, okay It might be a while before we're gonna be able to uh, You know lay down an album. So let's record get these things cut to tape so we don't forget them um, And that did wind up happening. So we recorded the songs on guitar and Drums and I think there was a second guitar track. It was just me and a two-piece uh, by the way Our band was called Satan's Almighty Penis so uh, we recorded four or five songs and then a couple of months, maybe a year later or so, I did vocals on two of those songs after I had written the lyrics for them. Um, and so then time just got away from us. A couple of years passed and then just a couple of months ago we had like a hard drive failure and the songs are just gone. Fucking gone for good. Bye bye. Um, but I managed to, to scrape together the two songs that I did record vocals for. So I decided, let's just call it. I want to get these songs put out there, out of our hands, so that we don't fucking lose them again. Um, so I put them on a video. Um, you can check that out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below for that for those two songs. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of those songs, you know, looking back on them. It's some of my best drumming that I ever did in the band. It's definitely some of my best vocals. Um, I remember thinking vocally I wanted to sound like Thomas Lindbergh or Topa from At The Gates and Vikotnik from Ved Boyne's uh, something somewhere in between there. Those are like two of my, some of my favorite singers. Uh, and I think it kind of came out uh, all right. So give those a listen if uh, you feel like hearing something weird. Um, the sound quality isn't the best, but uh, I think you can hear everything that's going on and it sounds pretty cool. I kind of like them. Um, so I'm happy to be able to have those just out there for the public to have uh, and to kind of interact with some old fans and stuff, people who appreciated uh, what we did for so many years. So yeah, check that out. Back to it. Uh, this is a band called Blood Cult. Good friend of mine, uh, The Rev, was in this band. This is We Who Walk Behind the Rose. Uh, this was put out by Rusty Axe, a sadly missed label. 
Uh, the CD's missing because it's actually in my car right now, and I'm listening to it. Uh, this is just fucking raw, obnoxious, culty kind of black metal from small town Illinois. I know Illinois, Champaign, Illinois. That's right. I I can't remember if I've ever been to Champaign, Illinois. I think I, I want to say I have actually. Um, I think I did a lot of drugs there, so that's probably why I'm not sure what happened or whatever. But uh, this is another one, Midwestern Occult by Blood, Blood Cult. Uh, this is uh, maybe a mid-era... Actually, it says right here, it's a bunch of demo tracks and rehearsals uh, from 2003, 4, 2, 1, all over the place. Yeah, this is a cool band. I really miss these guys. Check that out. Uh, merciful Fate cover. <laughs> This was self-released on Illinois and Thunder. So after they put out just like a bunch, a bunch of DIY stuff on like Rusty Axe and Illinois and Thunder, their own label, they finally got signed to Moribund and they did a really killer album, which I never actually picked up. I'd love to. Um, can't remember what it's called. Um, anyways, um, they got signed to Moribund and then they broke up. So I miss those guys quite a bit. Next, I've got Blood Dusters, Yeast album. This is such a filthy fucking album. I'm almost sick touching it. Um, but this is one of the first CDs I ever bought when I got into metal. Um, this is, I used to listen to the shit out of this when I was first getting into it. And it's, it still holds up. The guitar tone on this album is so fucking good. Just blasting, grindy death metal kind of stuff. As far as death metal or grind goes, this is really silly. And I didn't really realize how ridiculous it was at the time. Like, when I was getting into it, I was like, is this stuff all this bonkers? Um, sadly, it's not. <laughs> or maybe maybe it's a good thing it's not. But anyways, catchy songs, totally brutal stuff. I never liked anything else that this band did, but Yeast is just a, such a fun, killer album. Um, kind of like Macabre, I guess. Uh, a lot of songs about uh, serial killers and shit. So next we've got... <clears throat> This is Blood Feast. This is a band I don't know much about. Um, although I think I think I saw them live and bought this at a show called Classic Metal Fest in Chicago uh, about 10 or 11 years ago. But this appears to be, yeah, this is this is a bunch of unreleased stuff, uh, a demo, just some early recordings. And this is the only thing I have from Blood Feast. But it's just kind of like early death metal, late thrash somewhere in between there um, as far as I know they have a couple of good records but I don't think I've ever heard them and I definitely don't have them um, next we've got Blood of Christ this is a this is, I really like this album um, this came out on Pulverizer in 97 um, I kind of have a hard time describing this it's also missing because this is in my car um, I guess I would say it's for the uninitiated, it may be a little bit like somewhere between devourment and suffocation, somewhere around in there, but I don't know, don't take that too far. Just listen to it if that sounds interesting to you at all, but it's just like mid-90s death metal um, with kind of like a romantic sort of influence. There's some violins every once in a while, but it's straight up pummeling at other times. It's kind of a really weird, uh, eclectic mix of styles. You wouldn't expect it to sound like this based on the cover. Uh, but I just picked up their demo the other day on cassette called The Lonely Flowers of Autumn um, and I'm looking to rip that and put it up on YouTube because for the longest time I tried to find that demo for download and I just couldn't find it so I finally have it on tape uh, I popped up on Discogs the other day for 10 bucks and I had to fucking get it next we've got this is a weird one this is a band called Blood Freak <clears throat> and this came out on Razorback um uh... I couldn't tell you. I'm going to guess maybe like 2004. This album is called Live Fast, Die Young, and Leave a Flesh-Eating Corpse. <laughs> this is just more like silly, grind, death metal kind of stuff. Um, maybe quite a bit like uh, Bird Flesh, or maybe even kind of like Blood Duster too. Uh, but I listened to this the other day just to refresh my memory because it had been so long since I listened to it. And my first impression was that it sounds exactly like a mix between Entombed maybe Left Hand Path or Clandestine Era, and Carcass. I kid you not, the guitar tone is just pummeling like that Skogsberg guitar tone, but it's really just filthy and grindy, just like an early Carcass 
Um, so if that sounds like fun, this is a pretty good album, and I wish I hadn't uh, taken so long to listen to it again. <clears throat> so next, I, you guys are all talking about this, but it fucking deserves it. This is Blood Incantations Star Spawn. Um, this is gonna be on everybody's album of the year list. I think this is it. Um, it's really cool to see a death metal band doing something that's grabbing the attention of people from both black metal and death metal sort of legions uh, and meeting somewhere in the middle. You know, it's atmospheric. Uh, it's really musical. It's not fa focused like mainly on brutality. Uh, the music musicianship is just amazing. Uh, it's not too retro like a lot of uh, newer death metal stuff tends to lean on as a crutch. Uh, just really innovative, um, kind of reminds me of like Time Ghoul, if you're into that band. Um, definitely check this out though, you've probably already uh, heard it, but you know, these guys deserve all the accolades that they're getting. Um, I really like the artwork on it, I like how there's kind of like a bunch of nods to uh, Morbid Angel's Altars of Madness in it. Um, and also, so, it was kind of weird what happened, Dark Descent put this out. And then, like, the day after they started shipping out the orders, they had a big sale. I wish they would have just, like, either waited to release this until after the sale started so I could have ordered the stuff that I did with this at the same time. Whatever. Um, can't recommend this fucking thing enough. This is going to be uh, something I listen to regularly for a long time, I think. This band is really interesting. Okay, so let's get to this box. I don't know what's in it. It might not even be CDs, you know? I don't know. All I know is that this is from my good friend Brandon, um, who is the live singer at Obsequiae, um, and I'm going to be seeing him perform with them in about a month with Panopticon. Um, and he said that he had to order whatever's in this box from Finland recently. And so uh, let's check it out, I guess. Looks like it's got a little letter in there for me. I should probably not share that. I don't know what's going to be. No, okay, here. Smash Man. Love B. <laughs> yeah, here, here's a big letter. Okay, so we're going to get into that some other time off cam. But let's see what we got here. I don't know. I've never done an unboxing video, and I don't watch them. How do you... Do you have to show the cuts? Well, whatever. It's too late. There, I cut it open. Is this the part you guys get off on in the unboxing? Oh, oh, oh. Really like the corrugated cardboard. I can see some bubble wrap. I love bubble wrap. Man, I love popping them bubbles. Let's see, what do we got here? Stack of CDs, man. I love CDs, man. What do we got here? Nothing I recognize right off the bat yet. Um, okay. We've got some, I've, I've never heard of any of these bands and I don't recognize any of these. Yeah. Okay, let's see, we've got, uh, need to get my reading glasses on. Papa's, Grandpa's eyes go bad this time of night. Uh, Monte Penumbra, Heirloom of Sudden Fall. This looks like it's on Demon Worship Productions. Man, I don't know anything about this. Well, I hope there's something in the letter about it uh, to tell me what it is. It's not what I was expecting. I, I'll, I will say that. I have, so this is throwing me totally for a loop. And I've never even heard of this band, so I'm excited to check this out and see what this is. Huh. Okay. That's one. Here's another. Some nice little baggies. Dang, this thing's limited to a hundred. Number 90 of a hundred is hand numbered. So this is a band called, wow, Kalman Kantaya? I don't know anything about this. Put some light on this guy. Nice, we got some ice and fire. Not an upside down cross. I'm sold, all right, this is probably pretty good. I'm surprised that they did such an elaborate digit pack and limited it to a hundred. It's not even a CDR. It's really cool to see what you can do with uh, extremely limited copies of stuff these days. So yeah, another thing, I don't know what this is. It looks great. Kalman Kataya. 
I guess once I get this video uploaded, I'll put links to all this stuff down below so you can check it out if you're curious or if you just, yeah, because you're going to have to, because who knows, I'm going to have to spell Kalman Kataya several times before I uh, get it memorized. This is a band, Hour of the Night Gaunts. The band's called Vintage Flesh, Hour of the Night Gaunts. That's a really cool cover. Check that out. Uh, again, never heard of it. I don't know anything about it. Looks like some strange twisted black metal. Drums on priest skin ship. Let's see what we got. So this this is on Hidden Marley Productions. So it looks like these are all three from different labels. I don't think I've ever heard of any of these labels. I like to think that I've heard of everything, but I've never heard of any of this stuff. Never heard of any of these labels. I don't know what to think of this. This is just coming out of fucking nowhere. That's exciting. It's got like this little hype card on it. Let's see. Oh, that's a ton of reading. I could read it, but I don't want to bore you guys. Huh. Okay, well, that's. I'm going to check these out. I'll get back to you on what I think of them maybe in my next video. Um, yeah, so, again, this album is so fucking good. Check out this Niji Kata's Eric Alms album. I can't fucking recommend this enough. It's so good. If you're into anything remotely post-black metal like Agaloc, Panopticon, and, you know, if you just hear it, you can, if anything you're hearing sounds good to you, check it out. It's so fucking good. Um, the booklet. It's a total winter album for me. Usually I bust it out in the winter, but uh, I was just kind of trying to make a quick choice for what to play over this video. And this popped out at me. I haven't listened to it in a while. Um, and if you're a little trivia, the next album that came out by Nishikata, I sang on one song. It turned out really good, and I love it. Um, yeah, I miss those guys. Okay, so thanks for uh, joining me. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, all that stuff. And also, if you have any ideas for, like, lighting tips or things that annoy you about my videos things that I could improve to make them even better let me know um, getting a lot of subscribes I can tell it's working so thank you for joining me uh, don't, don't be afraid to comment anything down below and discuss anything we talk about all right uh, have a good rest of your weekend 